This year, we have a unique opportunity to hear from one of our local leaders for today's keynote presentation. Recently, there's been a lot of conversation about the future of transit, construction underway in Illinois, significant development near our stations, and now the future of transit expansion in the north side, south side corridor, dubbed the St. Louis Green Line. As one of the leading voices on the importance of this investment, we have the opportunity to welcome Mayor Tashara Jones to provide an update on the future of transit and where we are with the St. Louis Green Line. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you, Kim, for that wonderful introduction and congratulations on your 30 years of service. I hope I can look that good after working somewhere for 30 years. So today has been a really good day uh, so far. I'll just give you a brief overview of everything I've done so just before noon. Uh, I started the day with a groundbreaking, uh, no, I'm sorry, a ribbon cutting for Procter & Gamble. They're expanding their manufacturing facility in North St. Louis just off of Grand and 70. That's 700 jobs in our community, and we have a, we put together a, a, an agreement that works with our public schools so our children can get these groundbreaking entry-level jobs uh, in, a, in manufacturing so they can take care of their families, which is great for our region. Um, and just before I got here, we hosted in City Hall our first naturalization ceremony for new citizens. We have 31 new citizens for the city of St. Louis. So, and now we're gonna talk about transit. Who's ready? I'm excited to be here with you today because you understand the importance of making St. Louis a city where anyone can get around in a way that's safe, convenient, and enjoyable, no matter their mode of transportation. Over the next few years, my administration and our partners are transforming mobility in St. Louis. With the Brickline Greenway and the new bike paths connecting to it, you'll be able to bike or walk safely on a connected set of trails from the Arch to Forest Park, Fairground Park to Tower Grove Park, and more. But that's not all. Our streets will be safer because of the work we're doing to repave and calm more than 30 miles of arterial roads like Kings Highway, Union, Jefferson, and Grand. And we'll continue focusing on people rather than cars as we do this work and so much more. Because everyone deserves to be able to travel around St. Louis safely. Today, I have the opportunity to talk about one of the biggest transportation investments our city has seen in decades. The Metrolink Green Line will be a brand new light rail extension connecting neighborhoods in North and South St. Louis to each other and to the rest of the city and to the entire region. This light rail line will connect more St. Louisans to jobs, education, cultural experiences, sports, family, and friends. It'll connect more St. Louisans to opportunity. This dedicated in-street light rail project will travel from Fairground Park and Grand Boulevard along Natural Bridge Avenue before turning south on Jefferson and eventually reaching Chippewa in South St. Louis, picking up passengers at 10 stations along the way. With convenient passenger transfers to the existing Metrolink red and blue lines, the Metrolink green line will improve access to economic opportunities for more St. Louisans and will preserve and grow the city's unique neighborhoods. This project is so important for our city. St. Louisans know better than most that when neighborhoods don't receive the investment and opportunities that residents deserve, those neighborhoods will eventually decline. And we have to prevent that. More importantly, we have to reverse that. The neighborhoods along this corridor need serious investment and the Metrolink Green Line is that investment. Our goal is not just to move the needle. The goal is transformational change through transit investment. 
There's a time and a place for BRT and other transit options, but this is not the time or the place. This is the time to think big and to swing for the fences because the returns are so important to empower, develop, and transform our city for many decades to come. We are planting the seeds for trees that we may not be able to sit under their shade. So let's talk numbers. According to a study commissioned by CMT this past summer by the St. Louis University Community Planning Lab, construction of the Green Line will create nearly $2.9 billion of cumulative economic activity and create thousands of jobs with an estimated peak of 3,900 jobs in 2027. The study also underscored that there will be millions in economic activity in the first five years of revenue service as well. Building the Green Line is already helping us create lasting change that will make St. Louis more prosperous. This summer, I signed a bill to responsibly loosen restrictions on parking minimums, the maximum number of floors, and the minimum lot sizes in areas within a half mile of the proposed Green Line stations. And I want to thank the planning department and Don Rowe for all of their help with uh, making, making this bill possible. In these ways, we're encouraging the use of public transit, we're reducing barriers to constructing new housing and business dwellings, and we're increasing density along the Green Line. Those are essential ways of making these neighborhoods and our entire city stronger, healthier, and safer. And more good news, the Green Line project is moving closer to becoming a reality step by step. I'm, I'm looking at you, Talby. Yes, step by step. In February, the East West Council of Governments approved the locally preferred alternative, signifying the completion of the local planning phase. I want to thank our executive director, Jim Wild, who's here with us today for help shepherding that process forward. Then in June, the Federal Transit Administration approved the expansion project development request, meaning that we are one step closer to requesting federal funding. The next steps are to complete an environmental review and 30% of the design before the Green Line can be considered for the FTA's capital investment grant, which could cover up to 60% of the total cost. That's approximately $600 million in federal investment coming back to us in St. Louis if this project is given the green light. We expect th those steps to be completed next year, and I'll be excited to share even more with you once we get there. For now, let me tell you how thankful I am to East West Gateway Council of Governments, to Bi State Development, and the work, our wonderful partnership we have with them. And MoDOT has been a real meaningful partner as well. We know that we need their help and we're, if we're going to make this a successful project. I'm also thankful to the Biden-Harris administration and my good friend, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who's been a great partner in helping us get the federal funding we need to complete the Green Line. But make no mistake, the Green Line is on the ballot this November. Cities like St. Louis are getting the support and funding we need right now to realize big dreams for our future, and we don't want that momentum to stop. Last and most importantly, I need your support. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your colleagues about the Green Line and how it's going to make St. Louis a better place to live, work, and play. Tell them that we are a world-class city and a world-class public transit system like the Green Line is a monumental step in the right direction. And tell them that the Green Line is gonna bring growth and opportunity to our city, especially the neighborhoods around the, around the route. So do I have your support? <laughs> Most importantly, are you gonna spread the word? Yes. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you today about improving mobility and transit in St. Louis, and I hope I get the chance to do it again soon. Thank you all, and God bless.